integrated three students. Uh, this is likely going to be the last lesson for this little uh, trig unit circle lesson that we're having right before we get into testing mode. Uh, so this week's been pretty simple, but this video probably will go a little bit longer. Uh, but definitely have out your notes, be ready to uh, to write down some things, and we're going to be creating a diagram to start start off today. So let's go ahead and get into it. Okay, so in your notes, uh, draw a line. You're going to be putting uh, unit circle continued. Okay, and uh, we're going to start by drawing. Uh, we need an X, Y axis. So if you could go ahead and uh, start that up for me, X and Y. We are going to draw a unit circle. Now yours does not have to be perfect by any means. I'm just going to draw mine to make sure it looks pretty good. Um, but you can just draw the best you can by hand a circle. So here will be, eh, I want mine to be bigger. Okay. Just have to extend that one up there. That is fine. Here. Okay, good. So you have a unit circle and we know several things about this. First off, we know that the uh, origin of this or the, the center point is at the origin of this Y axis. Okay. We also should remember that a unit circle, the reason it's called a unit circle is because the entire radius is one. So that means that this point here is one zero. Okay. Now there is so much that, that we could do with the unit circle, but we are just going to, we're going to keep it simple um, in this class. Those that are going to go to pre-cal next year, what we're doing today, you can keep these notes and carry them along with you uh, into next year. Wow, I'm telling you, you're going to be way far ahead. Um, I've talked to the pre-cal teachers. They are uh, definitely... Uh, happy that we're going through this stuff. Uh, of course, if you're taking stats with me next year, then uh, we're not going to use it because th this is not a stats concept, but uh, this is still great math. It's likely that if you take uh, trig in college or something like that, you're going to see it again. If you end up taking calculus, you're going to pre-calc uh, in college or calculus, you're going to have to know these trig ideas. Okay. So here, once you've got your circle constructed, hopefully I've stalled in long enough for you to get that drawn. Let's go ahead and take a line, draw it. Uh, we want at a 45 degree angle is what we want. And we want to draw it up to the circumference, okay? And so once you draw that line on it, on the line itself, <clears throat> let's put a 45. We're not going to make the angle, like we're not going to draw an angle symbol I want to change this. I'll make this red so it's easier to see. There we go. So 45 degrees is the sort of that slope of the angle. It's a one to one uh, ratio for this segment here. Okay. So what I'm curious is about is this. Uh, we we know this point up here. By the way, it is zero one, right? That would be a 90 degree angle, correct? So what I want to know is what is this point right here that's what we want to know what is that point right there so initial thoughts on this have been oh it's one half right well no that's not necessarily the case one half would be if we drew that line that would be the point right because it's a slanted line it's proportional but with a circle it doesn't necessarily work that way okay it doesn't necessarily work that way so we it can't be a, it's not going to be halfway, right? We do know that it's the X value. So let's go ahead and put some space in here. We do know that the X value is less than one, right? It has to be so because it's to the left of it, it has to be less than one. And the Y value also has to be less than one because it's below that, that one up there. So we do know that. I'm also going to tell you that this answer is going to be pretty it's going to be a decimal pretty much okay now how are we supposed to find this that's the question right that's what we are are going to talk about well uh if we were in person i would give you some time to think about this but um 
Well, maybe you've come up with an idea, maybe not, but let's let's talk about it. the last lesson. So if we think about last lesson, the last video that you watched and that some of the delta math that we've been doing, we talked about those special right triangles. And you can look at this and you can say, oh, we might be able to create a special right triangle here. Well, we can create a right triangle. I'm going to do this. We have this leg here. Okay, yeah. And then we go this way, and there's a leg. What we end up with is this is the, uh, the one of these is the y value, one of these is the x value. And if we think about that, you should already know the answer to this. Which color line is the x and which one is the y? Well, the green line here is the y value. So I'm going to put that here. Okay, y value. And then the uh, blue line is the X value. Okay, so now that we have that, we know that this is a 45, 45, 90 right triangle. So we have our rules for those right triangles. And we, we, drew, we drew this, uh, or we had these rules and we're gonna write them down again on here. So if this is uh, 45, 45 and then of course this is the 90 degree angle right here we had these rules we said okay here's the whatever value this is this is sort of like the the base value right uh, that's the hypotenuse and its ratio is you take that hypotenuse to get and you multiply it by a fraction square root 2 over 2 Okay. And that goes for it down here as well. And we know that both of these legs are going to be congruent. So the, the, uh, the green and the blue should be the exact same value, meaning the X value is equal to the Y value in this case. Okay. So we're going to um, try to figure this out. Well, do we know any information besides, we know all the angles, right? But do we know any of these lengths here? Okay, do we know any of these values? Well, no, we don't know green, we don't know the blue at all. Do we know what the hypotenuse is? What is this hypotenuse here? Hopefully everybody is thinking, oh, it's one. Well, why is it one? Oh, well, it's the radius of the unit circle, right? It's one. So there's our hypotenuse. We know that this is one. Okay, well, that's gotta be very helpful. That's gonna help us a lot with figuring out what these side lengths here are because if i know that this is one what does that mean these are well that means that i'm going to plug in one where that that value is this is where the hypotenuse should go so one square root two over two well what's that well the one just goes away we get square root two over two so that's going to be the y value the y value is squ square root two be careful over two. That's going to be the Y value. Now, what about the X value? Well, the same thing is going to happen for the for the X value. It's going to. Why did I put S on the bottom? Oh, this is supposed to be a two. Sorry if that confused anybody. This needs to be a two here. Okay, sorry. Um, this should be the exact same thing. There, exact same thing. So we're gonna put that in here, square root two, two. Okay, so we found one of these coordinates. We found one of these coordinates. And that's, uh, that's exactly what I wanted to do, okay? Find these coordinates. So next, we're going to, um, we're gonna look at another line. So I'm gonna draw another one. We're gonna go here. Okay, and we're gonna call this one, we're gonna give it the degree measure. Red, okay, 30 degrees. It's gonna go there. So you're gonna draw that on your notes as well. Draw that on your notes. Okay, so we want to know what is I'm just going to duplicate this.
right here, okay? What are the coordinates for this? Well, we have different triangle that's getting created here, right? We want to know what we we want this y value again, but we also want this x value again. Okay? So we have the same thing. It's x and y. So x x and then the y value. So if we we see here what kind of special right triangle is this? Well, it's a 30 60 90. 30 60 90 is what is created here. So I'm gonna make one of those for us to look at. And we'll put, and you can draw this over to the side as well. 30, 60, and then 90. We took our notes over this the other day and we said, okay, one of these side lengths is gonna be S again, sort of like up here what that was. And it's always the one that's opposite of the 30 gram. So this is sort of our, our standard side length here. So in our diagram, be the sort of the green line here, okay? And we don't know what the green or the blue are. That's what we're trying to find. Of course, we know this one. Now for a 30, 60, 90, we know that the hypotenuse is double that side that's opposite the 30 degrees. So it's 2S, okay? 2s so that's going to be important and maybe you're already thinking okay what would this have to be then but then we also have the bottom relationship which is s times square root three okay well again we know that the hypotenuse is one here the hypotenuse is one so this is one so if i want to figure out what this side length is all i have to do is divide by two on both sides to get it so this will go away and that gets us, okay, this side length is one half. So if the hypotenuse is one, we know the green, green one is gonna be one, one half. Okay. That side length, that green, that, that leg has to be a half. Now, the blue length here is gonna be a little more complicated because we know that it's going to be this length times square root three. So this should be equal to S, which we know, okay, we said that was one half times square root three. And this isn't too bad, as long as you understand how this is gonna simplify. We multiply the square root three. Any time you multiply something, it multiplies with the top always. So this is square root three over two. That's gonna be that X value. It's gonna be that blue X value. So I'm gonna write that in square root three over two. And hopefully everybody can see that pretty well. It's very, I've gotten good at writing with the mouse, but it's still definitely has its uh, limitations. All right, so we found that one, great. Next, we have one more. I, I wonder what the angle will be. What angle will I go with? Well, this one here is going to be 60 degrees. Okay, 60 degrees. And let me uh, readjust this. I'm going to erase. Too much. Fine. So we are trying to find uh, new coordinates for this point here. Uh, hello? So we want these coordinates for that intersection up here. And we know that we have this Y value is gonna be this green line, oh, oh, green, green line here. Job of drawing right now. Green, okay. And then the blue goes here. We have another right triangle that's created. And what kind of triangle is this? Well, it's a 30, it's a still a 30, 60, 90. The 30 degree angle is up here, right? And what you'll notice is it's actually congruent to the other triangle. So if you think about this, 
blue, this, this side here, the X, is going to be opposite the 30 degree angle. And it's just gonna be one half like the other one was. And what's, what happens here, and we're gonna go ahead and cut to the chase on it, we're actually flipping this first one here. We actually just take the values and we flip them. And because what we've done is we've kind of just flipped this triangle, right? It was a 30, 60, 90, now it's 60, 30, 90, and we're just sort of flipping it. And so the values just swaps. This is square root three over two. All right, good. Um, <clears throat> so we've got that. And that's sort of the all we really need for this unit circle it, well, to start, okay? But this pattern is gonna continue all the way around the circle. We'll have one rotation around this circle, all 360 degrees. Now, common question is, could we do one of these for 15 degrees or for, you know, 75 degrees? No, we're not gonna be able to do that because those don't have special right triangle properties. We are just limiting ourselves to these special right triangles inside the unit circle, and that's what typically you're going to see, okay? So uh, we are going to fill out a full unit circle. So there's two options that you have as distance learners. Now, in in-person learners, I was able to print out a sheet for them. We don't have that luxury. So you have two options. You can continue drawing this on here if you don't have a printer which i don't know i, I don't expect many people to have printers because printers are very kind of, kind of annoying technology to have um but i'm gonna i'm gonna post a link to a uh, a sheet that you can can look at and, and fill in that's what we're about to do is fill in the entire sheet or uh you can just continue on here so those are your options so i'm gonna pull up the sheet so uh, also I'm gonna pause the video and I'm gonna put this link inside the video so that you can go to this. If you have a printer, you can just right click on the, the black area and click print and you can print this out for your own use. If you don't have a printer, um, you have a couple options. I think I've shown y'all how to, how to clip this before. You have this tool, if you type in snipping on uh, Windows, you can click and drag it Okay. and then you can copy it and put it into paint so you have a lot of options but just in some way somehow you're going to need to uh, write on this so here I could start drawing but you'd be using your mouse I'd rather you use a pencil so uh, either print this out or um, you know continue on here uh, you're going to need to draw all of these lines here and all of these little degrees and angles are going to be important okay zoom in okay so this is what I here we go okay so I'm going to here we go. so we're gonna go ahead and fill in the info that we know okay so we're gonna we know this entire first quadrant here okay I guess the first thing I do want to ask is what is this degree measure down here what's gonna go here well it's gonna be zero degrees okay zero degrees Next, we know this is 30, 60, and 9, uh, oop, I have that wrong. This is 60, 90, and this is 45. Okay, there we go. So we're going to go ahead and fill all this in. I'm probably going to skip ahead and do that right now, okay? So it's just going to flash, and you'll have the rest of this filled in. All right, presto, there it is. So we need to continue on the other side. We're gonna go all the way around this bad boy, okay? Think about it. We don't really need to do any more of these calculations with these right triangles. Uh, I am gonna do this real quick. You'll notice that all of these are going to end up creating basically the same triangles on this side. It's, it's like a mirror image. Imagine the Y axis here is the mirror and we're reflecting them over, right? That's, that's exactly what's happening. But the angle measure here is not gonna be a 60 degree angle because we're starting here and we're going zero, 30, 15, 60, 90, and you'll see there's a pattern, right? 30, 15, 15, 30. 
to 30 plus 30 plus 15 plus 15 plus 30 and it's going to keep that all the way around so we go from here and we say plus 30 well what does that get us to should be 120 okay that's what we that's what we get to then we get we go plus 15 so that's going to be 135 we go one uh, uh, add another 15 that gets us 150 and then of course we know we go another 30 we get 180 and we'll pause on the degrees there for a minute and what's going to happen is these values are all going to reflect they're going to go straight across and you don't have to draw this I'm, I'm going to draw it they're going straight across right flipping straight across to their counterpart they're getting reflected equally distanced across that y-axis okay so we are going to repeat all of these over here so let's go ahead and do that okay so we've got um, all those filled in now you might be saying there's a problem here hopefully you are maybe you're just along for the ride right now but if you look at these something has to be different about this okay because we've gone from the first quadrant top right now we're in the second quadrant and in that second quadrant if you remember from back in the day right and uh, you probably learned about this in middle school in that second quadrant the x values are all negative so I'm gonna use a, I'm gonna use a red line for that these should all be negative values every one of them okay and so that's the only difference is we're, we're shifting these values straight across and we change them to negatives and that same thing's gonna happen here we should we should know this this has to be negative one so it's the opposite here it's flipped across same distance right now all of these values are going to get reflected across this so they're going to go straight down to their corresponding value they get shifted down now and it, it's again it's the symmetry that's happening within the circle that's what's so cool about the inner circles there's a lot of a lot of symmetry that makes it very orderly actually even though they're starting to look a little bit crazy with all these values in it but let's continue with these degrees. We add another 30 to the 180, that gets us to 210. We add another 15, which is gonna be uh, 225. Then we add another 15 to that, and we're going to get to 40. We add 30 to get down here to this angle, 270. Doing good. So we've got those. Now we just need to fill in these values. So we're going to copy these down here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So we have that. Now what's the key? What's the sign going to look like on, on these? This is that third quadrant, if you remember. In that third quadrant, the X and the Y values are negative. So this is going to be uh, like this, except both every single sign on here has to be a negative for both the X and the Y. Okay? both the X and the Y. So there is what we get here. It's gonna be at the bottom here, 270 is going to be zero, negative one. So we're just flipping the uh, the X value is still zero, but the Y value changes signs here, okay? Alrighty, so <clears throat> continue. We have one last section here, and so you have two options. You can go reflect across this way, Okay, the, all those values are going to transfer, or reflect this way. I almost should have done these in another color, but either way, it's symmetrical, right? It's going to either flip across that y-axis, or it's going to flip across that, that x-axis, and we're just putting those values down. This actually looks kind of cool. I like that. <laughs> uh, but that's what we need to do. But let's go ahead and get the degrees on here. We add 30 to this 270. We get 300. Okay. Go again. Uh, we're gonna add 15, 315, add another 15, it's 330. And then we get all the way back up here. And we can also put on here, this is a full rotation, it's 360 degrees, right? So we can we can add that to this. I'm actually going to, I'll delete this. I'm gonna edit this to say zero or three sixty. So it could be either one, zero or three hundred and sixty degrees. So starting at zero or go to three sixty. That would be a full rotation. Go ahead and copy these values down here. So I'm going to do that. All right, 
the magic of of editing video right uh so we've got that all in there and we have essentially completed our unit circle but what are the symbols going to be on this one well this is in that fourth quadrant all the x values are positive however y values are negative so we put negatives on there okay all right we have essentially completed this unit circle but i'm sure some of you are wondering well what are these what are these for what is this all right well those are the other type of measure that we can use to um to measure angles and hopefully you remember before spring break which has been a very long time we talked about radians and how we measure radians okay for instance um how many radians are in out of half of a circle right and so here's the diagram how many radians well we have one two three radians almost and then just a little bit more actually 3.146 which is approximately as you can see here pi there are pi radians so hopefully you remember that lesson so we know that this should be pi so we're going to add these to our there so we know that that is pi radians this would be zero radians, or actually, we know that's zero. The full circle, if we went all the way around it, full circle would be two pi, right? So here's all the different degree approximations. I think we've discussed these, but we're gonna go ahead and fill in these. These are sort of the exact radians at those different points. So we have uh, pi over six, Okay, pi over four, pi over three. And then it does make sense that if the whole, or half the circle's pi, then a quarter of it, we just divide that up by two. Right, and there's that. Down here, that this sheet also gave us this one, which is three pi over two. And all this is, by the way, is arc length. We've talked about that. We related these radians to arc lengths. This is the distance on the arc up to this point or all the way here. It's just how many times I can wrap that radius around, okay? So that's all these are. So we continue and we're gonna be able to fill in the rest of this. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull up like a completed unit circle and I'm gonna make sure that you have everything that you need uh, written down. Because the radians, I'm not too worried about, you know, converting to that we're not going to really um, uh, sweat over that too bad but let me go ahead and pull up a completed unit circle here it is so you'll see the rest of the radians that go in there with each degree this should correspond to what you have on yours and I know at this point look at all this info it's like whoa what the heck if you just if I showed you just showed you this it'd probably be pretty intimidating but uh, since we've taken our time, hopefully it's making sense how this is constructed. Uh, I know I, maybe I don't have time to talk about this, but I, I've had students say, who comes up with this stuff, right? And, and if you guys think about it, and I said, well, think about this, because um, I've seen this, uh, the game Minecraft, I never play it. But there's people who spend hours just making like the biggest imaginable mansions and worlds ever. But why? Like, what's even the point of that? But if you think, if there's people out there that can just commit so much time to doing that, which is not really, I mean, you're creating, right? But it's not really doing anything. It's not inconceivable that somebody would take a circle and do something like this. Maybe to you guys that don't really have the inspiration with circles or anything like that. But, right, like, if you spend enough time looking at something, eventually patterns usually arise. And that's what makes math so cool uh, is this right here. So there's my little spill about that. Okay, that was a minute. So um, I'm gonna pause, make sure that you have all of this information. We didn't, I didn't fill out all of mine here, but all the rest of those radians are what you're missing here. Uh, so this is three pi over two. We didn't put in, but fill in the rest of those. And we're gonna go ahead and, uh, so I'll pause. Okay, so <clears throat> let's talk delta math now because I know that you're going to want to know, well, how can I use this to help me with delta math? And, and that is important. That's what we, that's the next I, next topic that, that we need to look at is how, how you can do your delta math. Um, on here, there it 
is delta myth. Okay, so let's get in here and let's let's look at this. First off, I think last unit, uh, or the last thing we did before spring break, I think I had shown this degrees to radians, radians to degrees. So let's talk about this. If you have your unit circle, I am okay with you using your unit circle to do this. Uh, some of my some of my students were saying, "Can we make a contest out of this, please?" I was like, no, "We're not going to do that." Uh, this time challenge, you can have your unit circle right next to it. Let me put this up in the center here. You can have your unit circle right next to this as you're doing it. So this is degrees to radian, and normally we had a formula for this, but Obviously, you're not going to have enough time if you just keep calculating the formula. There's a pattern behind it. There's memorization aspects to this. And I'm going to go ahead and tell you, if you take pre-cal, um, I'm not really sure if that happens at our school, but some pre-cal teachers, and I know for me in college when I took trig, they would hand me a blank unit circle and say, hey, you can use this on the test, but you have to know how to fill it in. So there's, a, there's an aspect of memorization. So I've had students complete this in, uh, in they're crazy in my fourth period. They... Uh, they, they've done this, the ones that wanted to do it, they have their own competition, in like 11.3 seconds. And they're not guessing, because the probability of guessing all of these correct in a row is one in a million. I did the, I did the math on it. <laughs> you can't do it, okay? Uh, it, it's just probably not going to happen. Let's see what this looks like uh, here at 210 degrees. So all you got to do is go to your, here's, here's 210, right? What's the radian? There it is, 360. That's 2 pi. It doesn't show that on there. We need to make sure we put that on here. This is... 2 pi add that to your to your chart because it's 2 pi around right so that's we want to make sure we have that so that's 360 is 2 pi 315 oh that's 7 pi over 4 90 degrees half pi so on and so forth you get the idea right so that's what you're doing in this section that should be quick and easy obviously that's going to feel like nothing <laughs> just cuz you have the chart uh, again, some teachers aren't going to do that in the future, but I'm not really trying to sweat over this too bad. I'm just trying to introduce the idea to prep those that are going to pre-cal, okay? Same thing here, radians to degrees. You just go in the other direction. 7 pi over 6 is 210 degrees. 5 pi over 6, where is that at? Right here, that's 150. 90, uh, 1 6 is 30, 30. And you can see how they could do it fast, you know, and if you want to try to do it really fast, you know, go for it. That's a, that's up to you. But, uh, but this could, this is not going to be difficult. I think to reach that hundred second time limit, you can take your time. Okay. And, and use the chart. Alrighty. Now, <clears throat> not really ready to do this section yet. Um, identifying we have all six trig ratios so in the in here you're going to be seeing we're going to talk about some new trig ratios and that's going to be in this video i know we're already 33 minutes in i'm apologize for that i don't usually like it to be that long but uh, we're going to discuss uh we, we've got to talk about more delta math so i'd say we have probably another 20 minutes or so in this video um again not usually my style for that for for video but i want to get this done it's thursday not trying to continue this tomorrow so why did i type video okay uh evaluating trig ratios on the unit circle and this concept that we are about to talk about here what i would say uh, for those going to pre-cal this is like the number one thing that they would like you to know going into it or have some experience so that maybe next year even if you don't understand it this year the light bulb will go off. You're like, oh, I see now. Okay. We're going to start with examples. Okay. We're going to start with examples. And the example that we're going to start with, and I'm going to go ahead and actually copy in my unit circle. We're going to put that in here so that I don't have to change screens. So let's, come on now, paste. Excellent. Unit circle. A little bit bigger. All right, this is great. Okay, so example. We want to find sine of 30 degrees, cosine of 30 degrees, and a tangent of 30 degrees.
Okay. That's all we want to do. Uh, let me move my camera over. Out of the way of the unit circle. There? Okay. That's what we want to do. And so for sine, we are going to, uh, we're going to recall the ratio that we need for that. What is sine? Well, you we think Sokotoa. Uh, I, I don't think that we've done any review for this yet, but look, so let me type this up. When we talked about sine Sokotoa, this would be a review from uh, iMath 2. You would have learned about Sokotoa, right? So when we think sine, we're thinking opposite over hypotenuse. Okay. When we think cosine, we're thinking adjacent over hypotenuse. And then when we think tangent, we're thinking opposite over adjacent. And what we mean by that is with the, the right triangles, right? With the right triangles, if this is my angle here, let's say this is 30 degrees. Here's the opposite adjacent and hypotenuse. My camera is in the way, of course it is. Down here too, right now. That's what we're talking about. 30 degrees, opposite adjacent hypotenuse. I know I haven't done any re review with that, but I, I hope that's okay with you guys, what I just did there. And, and hopefully you remember mostly just like the setup of, of this, okay? So I'm going to go back to this, uh, on this unit circle, and we're going to draw these lines again, okay? So if we're talking about this, this triangle here, this is the 30 degree triangle and we say sine of 30 degrees, we're talking about this angle right here, this is the 30 degree angle. So when we do that, we have, this is the opposite side, this is the adjacent side, and here's the hypotenuse, okay? Uh, very similar, let me go back here to this one. This is the hypotenuse right here, this is, and it was all the hypotenuse were one, right? Go back. We're going to go ahead and set up that ratio. What is the length of the green line, the opposite side here? Well, we said that that was this y value, right? One half. So we're going to put one half up top. Okay. One half goes up there. What goes on the bottom? What's the hypotenuse for this triangle? Well, it's one. So what does that mean this value is if I have to evaluate it? What is, what is this? One half divided by one. Anything divided by one is just itself. So here's the answer to this. Sine of 30 degrees is equal to one half. That's the answer. Okay. That would, we have successfully evaluated that trig ratio. Okay. All right. Next, we want cosine. This is getting, this is going to get a little bit cramped here. I might even rewrite, I'm going to rewrite this on. Have cosine 30 degrees adjacent over hypotenuse. Well, again, we know the hypotenuse is one, right? What's the adjacent side? What's the blue line? Well, that was. So we put that up top, square root three over two, right there. So when we do that division, we get square root three over two, because the one goes away, there it is. That's cosine of 30 degrees. Last, we're gonna do tangent of 30 degrees. So we'll see the, compare these together. So tangent of 30 degrees. I'm gonna equal Adjacent, no, wrong. Opposite over adjacent. This is the green length divided by the blue length. You're dividing those sides. So we get one half over square root three over two. So in each class, I always ask them, how do you do this? How do you take one half and divide it by square root three? Usually just a handful of them know, but we have to use what's called, and hopefully you remember this, keep, change, flip, right? 
You've learned that somewhere along the line, at least I hope so. If not, today's the day, right? To divide fractions, you keep the first fraction. So I'm gonna write this down below. So we, we keep the first fraction one half. We change the division, which is what a fraction is, to multiplication. And we flip the second fraction, so it becomes two over square root three. That's always true for fractions. Uh, some teachers may have said you multiply by the reciprocal of the denominator. That's fine, of course. Um, but I always like KCF. People, that some students say KFC, but KCF, right? Multiply these fractions, and you're going to get two over two square root three. These twos will divide away, and you get one over square root three. And then remember what we talked about uh, in the last video. We had talked about rationalizing, right? You cannot leave that irrational number, so we need to rationalize. Anytime you have a radical in the denominator, you have to rationalize. So how do we do that? Well, we multiply by the radical that's in the bottom, so it's square root three square root three, we go there, multiply straight across, we get square root three on top, on the bottom it's square root nine, which becomes, square root nine is three over three. And that is our answer for this one. So be the tangent. Obviously tangent is way more difficult because usually you're gonna have values. Here, these were easy because we were always dividing by one, okay? All right, so we're gonna write down us general rule. So we're gonna say this, in general, okay. For any of these, for any of these functions, sine of theta, cosine of theta, Or tangent of theta. Theta, remember, is just any angle measure that we are interested in. So I chose 30 last time, but we could have picked 135, we could have picked 240, we could have picked any of these, right? It's always going to be one of these, though. It's going to be equal to opposite over hypotenuse for this one. Now, when we say opposite over hypotenuse here, what did that end up actually being? Well, it was this for sine, it was this value, right? That was the y value. And it doesn't matter which one I go with, it's always gonna be the green line that's the opposite, any of these degrees. So it's always gonna be the y value divided by the hypotenuse. But what's the hypotenuse always gonna be? It's gonna be one. So in essence, sine of theta is equal to y. That's it. Anytime I ask you a question about sine, you're just looking at the y value. Let's uh, let's try this. Let's go to the delta math. Let's go to this one here. Let me not do that one yet. We'll do this, sine of 240. Okay, here's our unit circle. What do we do? Well, we go to 240, here it is. What are we looking at? The y value. I need to move my camera again, hold on. We're looking at the y value here. Here's 240, here's the y value. So I'm gonna type that in, negative square root three divided by two. That's gonna be the, the value you want, y value. However, don't forget, you have to rotate this green dot to the appropriate angle. So we're gonna scoot this around and it snaps into place as you can see here, down to that, that third snap. So going here, one, two, three, it has to go there. If you don't do that, you're gonna get the problem wrong. I had somebody that did that in class. We submit the answer, we got it, okay? Let's find another sign problem. And I'll talk about negative angles in a second. Sine 210, okay? So I see 210 on my unit circle. Drag this all the way around. I'm just going one tick this time. And that's gonna be negative one divided by two. Submit answer. Good, okay, cool. So whenever you're looking at the sine, the sine is equal to y. What about cosine? Well, that is adjacent over hypotenuse. And that ended up being this x value over one, right? And that's gonna be true for all cosines. Cosine is x over one. 
equal to x. Okay, so that is going to be what cosine is. So let's look at some examples for cosine on here. Not the negatives yet. We will talk about this. Cosine 135. Okay, 135, that's right here. We're going to go ahead and slide this up to that position. <laughs> and then what are we looking for? We're looking at the x value. That's all we want. So it's going to be negative square root 2 divided by 2. That's going to be the right answer. We submit. That's it. Just looking for the x values. Now, typically, <clears throat> the tangent is going to be the most work, as we saw over here. There's a lot of fractions, right? So, um, this is going to be opposite over adjacent. This is the green divided by the blue, which is y divided by the x. That's what's going to go here. y divided by x is tangent, okay? If you know this going into pre-cal, this is what they want, okay? Uh, if, if nothing else from this week you really take away, this is the one thing. Sine is y, cosine is x, tangent is y divided by x in the unit circle. Knowing these ratios is gonna be important. So we've sort of graduated from that iMath2 perspective. Trig is growing up, right? It's becoming now this y value, x value, y divided by x value. That's what we're talking about, okay? So this is a super important deal here uh, for as far as uh, Trig is concerned, okay? So big, big steps here. Let's look at some tangent examples. Tangent. tangent 120 okay so we go here 120 and I'm going to uh, write on this uh, I'm gonna go ahead and move this here it is the first tick right there okay we're going to draw on this and, and write on it so this is going to be y divided by x for 120 we look here here's the y value so we do square root 3 over 2 divided by we have negative one half, so negative one divided by two. Remember we have to do the keep change flip. This becomes keep, change the division to mul multiplication, flip that second fraction right here, okay? We'll go ahead and multiply straight across. We get two square root three over negative two. What happens with these twos? Well, they divide and we end up with square root three over negative one. When you divide by negative one, you just get negative square root of three. Here is our answer to that problem, okay? So negative square root of three. So tangent's a little more involved, but um, we're, you are gonna have to deal with some of those examples. So negative square root of three, we'll submit all right, there's one more tangent example I want to look at, and then we'll talk about these negatives. Ah, interesting. Let's do this one. Now, there's two more tangent examples, so let's look at this one. So, tangent of 270. Here is this, right? X over Y. What's X? X is, or excuse me, Y over X. Y. Y is, and hopefully you're writing these examples down. Y is negative 1. X is 0. So what happens when we divide by zero? Well, we can't do it. It's not allowed, okay? And uh, if you're remembering, it means it's undefined. Any of these vertical lines, any of those vertical angles like 90 degrees or 270, they're gonna be undefined, for tangent at least. That's not the case for cosine or sine. You're just taking the x or you're just taking the y value for either of those. So we go back over here, we have a button, undefined. Submit, what? Oh, I forgot to drag the, the cursor. What did I submit? Okay, I rotated my angle incorrectly. Okay, whoops, don't forget to do that. Uh, don't be like me, this is a good example of that happening. <laughs> All right, tangent 240, no, I don't want that one. Let me, let me, I'm gonna skip ahead till I find one that I want, okay? All right, so I want this one. And uh, for tangent of 45 degrees, that's what we're talking about. So we look at the 45 degree angle 
Oh, wait, wait, wait. Okay, we look at the 45 degree angle and we see these values. So tangent of 45 is gonna be square root two over two divided by square root two over two. What do you notice about these? We don't even, oh wait, wait, my camera's in the way. Darn it, this camera. So when you look at this fraction that's created, notice that it's the same on top as the bottom. And when you do that in division, what does that mean? Well, it's one, okay? So any of these angles, the 45, the 135, the 225, the 315, are gonna produce uh, measure or values that divide to be one. Now, sometimes it's gonna be a negative one, right? If I did it here, this would be uh, y and this would be x, right? And that would make this a negative and this a negative, okay? So you have to be careful and watch the signs. It is important to set it up still with tangent just so you can make sure that you have it correct. So for me, I need to put this uh, to 45 and I'm just gonna type a one in that, okay? All right, let's talk about the, let's talk about the negative angles and I'm gonna choose just a simple one for this. Uh, sine of negative 45 degrees. So let's talk about what that means. When you say negative, what that means is you're rotating the other direction. Instead of going uh, counterclockwise, you're going clockwise. So instead of going up to, up to 45 degrees here, we're going to be going down this way negative 45 degrees. So this would be negative, this would be a positive value. It changes the direction of rotation. So we're gonna go down 45 degrees, which gets us here. Essentially, when you have a negative, you can do 360 minus that degree. And you know that it's gonna be 315. That's another approach that you could take is subtracting it away. But we know that this is the angle we want, and we want sine so what is that that's the y value so we want this one here okay on des uh, delta math we want to move that down 45 degrees and then we're going to take that y value negative square root two over two yeah okay hopefully that makes sense hopefully that makes sense we're approaching probably the longest lesson of all time Length, but there's one more concept that I have to get to. I'm so sorry. Last one that you need to be successful on your delta math is the reciprocal trig ratios. Reciprocal trig ratios. So there are three new trig ratios that you must uh, must know, and uh, if you've already looked at this identifying trig ratios all six right away we see something called cosecant uh, and you, you'll see other ones there's tangent we're used to that one cotangent uh, you have what's called secant those are the new ones that we got to talk about now they're not complicated and this isn't going to be difficult uh, I'm just it's just getting in on the end of a very long lesson so again we're going to write out all uh, all of the trig ratios again under this so sine of theta equals opposite over hypotenuse cosine theta equals uh, adjacent over hypotenuse and then tangent of theta equal to opposite over adjacent Okay, so that's what we're used to. Those are our trig ratios. Now, these are called reciprocal trig ratios, the new ones, because we're going to find the reciprocal. What is the reciprocal? That means we flip them, right? We flip that ratio. So we're going, I'm going to type that over here. So we're going to say reciprocal. I'm going to change it to red. Work, change it to red. Uh, yeah, red. Okay, cool. And we are going to find these reciprocals. So we go here. And what is the reciprocal of this? Well, it's gonna be hypotenuse over opposite. 
The reciprocal of this is hypotenuse over adjacent. And then this last one is adjacent over opposite. That's all that that's going to be. You're just flipping them. You're inverting them kind of. It's not an inverse though. I don't want to call it an inverse because that's what somebody had asked. Well, isn't that the same thing as this? No, it's not. It's not an inverse trig function. It is the reciprocal trig function. And so what we do is we name that. We, we have names for all of these. This one is called uh, cosecant. And if you were to look at this in a, like a, an abbreviated version of like sine, this is DSC theta. And here is secant, which is SEC theta. And then this last one is cotangent. Now, the one that's the easiest to remember, and, and even for me, I struggled when I learned about this. Um, is cotangent. That's the easiest one because it, it makes sense. Tangent, cotangent. But we can't call sine cosine because we already have cosine here. So they, they changed that up. I'm, I'm not really sure the naming process there. Uh, but that's what they came up with. Cotangent, which is just going to be C-O-T. Okay. And that's really all the information I'm going to need to give you about this because problems here. Um, here here's a problem. We have uh, in this triangle NOP, the measure of P is 90 degrees. PO is, okay, so we have all the values. What is the ratio that represents the secant of N? So I'm going to, uh, I'm going to draw on this. So here's our reference angle. This is theta be opposite this is adjacent and this is hypotenuse so what is secant well it's the inverse of cosine cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse this is hypotenuse over adjacent so what we want to put here uh, what we want to write on here is we're going to say uh, secant s e c of n is equal to hypotenuse over adjacent which is hypotenuse is 85 adjacent side is 84 we're just going to type that in here so 85 over 84 should oh snap there it is we got it okay not too bad do another one here we want the cotangent okay so cotangent Cotangent, C-O-T, of, we want G this time, so here's theta, right? Cotangent of G equal to adjacent over opposite. It's the inverse of tangent. So we want, here's opposite, here's adjacent, here's hypotenuse. So we want adjacent, 21, over 20. That's going to be our answer for this. <laughs> if we can simplify it, we will. I don't think many of these do. So 21 over 20. That's going to be it. And I'm going to stop the video there with that. You should have everything. Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, I just want to briefly mention this. This is the same. These down here are exactly the same as this one, except now we're using radians. Whoops. I need to make sure that. I talk about this, sorry. So here it says sine four pi over three. Maybe I can beat my time still. So it's the same thing we were just doing. Four pi over three is down here, it's 240. Sine, we want the y value, right? So the y value there, uh, four pi over three is negative square root three over uh, two. We submit that we need to make sure that we move this down <coughs> we got it okay so I almost forgot that but uh, the idea <coughs> is exactly the same as what we were doing with, uh, with this one so you should have everything you need now to do all of this uh, all of this Delta math because it is due tomorrow so 
I'm gonna go ahead and stop the video there. I beat my, I didn't go to an hour. 